Hey guys, CJ here at PBX How To's. We're going to continue the IP telephone series uh, with the Dynamics uh, configuration for the 4600 IP telephones. Um, but some requirements that you need to check first, just in case you didn't watch the uh, first video. Display, system, customer. You want to make sure you have the proper amount of licenses installed on your PBX uh, that are called IP underscore phone and that your limit has a number in it and this tells you how many uh, IP telephones you can add to your system and as you can see I have two alright and how you find that out is here are the registered and this is registered right so you can add a thousand IP telephones but as long as only 450 are registered you're okay that 450 first it's not gonna register it's gonna tell you, you need more licenses alright so the other things you need to make sure of, and again, like I said in my prior video, you, I will talk about the VoIP setup um, in detail, both to the S87, 88, 80, you know, the, the higher level PBXs as well as the 8300. Um, but you want to know which, which uh, IP address your telephones are going to call to on an 8300. You look at the processor IP, and everything else will be taken care of for you. All right. But again, I'm going to talk about that in detail. Uh, in a different video because this one's specifically on the IP telephones. So let's get going on adding your IP telephone. Now, I already have one added for my prior video, but I'm going to remove it. Remove station 1015. <clears throat> and now my 1015 just died, and that's okay. So I can add station 1015, or you can do next, or whatever you want. I can say 4630. You know, and type that in. But since I already have it, I'm going to say dupe station 1013. And you can see 1015 name, IP screen, phone, security code. Always, always, always give your IP telephones. If your stations are going to potentially be an IP telephone, give them a security code. All right. So I'm going to submit that. And you can see it's added. Display station 1015. You can see here it is. It's got all the features and all the core and class of service and all that good stuff that are in my original IP telephone. Because I have a template, you can see the call appearances, you read the dialing lists, and all that good stuff. All right. So now that your IP telephone is 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 added in the system, now we need to go configure the DHCP server. Uh, we need to get the phone prepared. We need to get the files. We need to get all that. So let's do that next. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to go get the files that you're going to use for your phone. Okay, So the way you do this is you go to uh, support.avaya.com, you click on downloads, click on the A to Z list, and once there you go locate the, the IP telephone that you're going to get the files for, and in this case we're doing 4600 series IP telephones, so I'm going to click on that. And once at the product page you got to click on downloads again. And once here, you locate the specific IP telephone release software as well as the TFTP server that you're going to use. Now, as I said before, you can use any type of TFTP server, um, but we're going to use Avaya's, and there's a special note with Avaya's, and that's talking about the vulnerability that's in it. Um, just making sure that you have it located in the root folder of CTFTP. All right. Don't know about that? Go look at my prior video on the static assigned for 4600. So since I have a 4630, and again, the process is exactly the same. It's just different files, except for the TFTP server. So I'm going to click on the 4630 IP telephone. And once there, <clears throat> I'm going to scroll down. And uh, there's three files I need to get. All right, And that is, if you if you have not already downloaded a TFTP server, you need to get three files. If you've already downloaded a TFTP server, you only need two. The two that you need are the the phone files themselves, and you can either get it out of the zip or the executable. I prefer the zip because I can basically tell it where I want to extract all the files. And you need this 46xx settings file. All right. <clears throat> so once you've downloaded them, and I'm going to save target as, and it's already downloaded, and I've extracted it, and here they are. Okay. So they're in the TFTP, but because I have two different phone types that I'm going to be showing as, as part of the video series, I created two folders. And that's because I want specific 46xx settings file for each types of phone. Now, 
like I said before, if I will be doing a full video on this file, how to understand it, so you can only use one. But I suggest if you're new to this, create separate folders and separate files for each phone. Not each phone, but each phone type. So if you have a 4600 series, any 4600 series have one folder for it. 1600 series, any you know one folder for it. A 9600 use a folder for it. All right. So now that you can see that we have our files, we're ready to go to set everything up. Now I've already installed the TFTP server, which is right here, and I need to go in and click Setup. And I set. There's a few things you need to check. Make sure no incomings checked on the options, and select your outbound uh, file path, which I have here. See TFTP 4600, as you can see, that's where the files are. Okay. Once you have that, you select OK. It's going to ask you, do you want to select to say no? Now that your TFTP server is ready to go and you want this running, all right, and you've downloaded your files for your IP telephones, we can now set up our DHCP. And the way you do this, and you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm clicking on Start. I'm clicking on, you can kind of see the bottom of it, Administrative Tools and DHCP. All right, now if you don't have DHCP installed, you need to just go install it on your server. But again, this is for the server guys as a very basic guide because obviously there's new servers out there there's 2008 there's 2000 you know whatever there's tons of different types there's NT if there's anybody still on NT 4.0 but this pretty much translates across the board when it comes to DHCP so I'm gonna set these server options up I'm gonna set the scopes up and have everything ready to go so when we boot the phone up for the first time it gets an IP address from here it dynamically gets all the settings for the phone that you would put in statically and then apply it and get the TFTP to set the servers up. So let's go through setting up the DHCP now. So now let's get the PV or the uh, DHCP server set up. All right. So once it's open, you're going to right click on the actual server itself and we're going to say new scope. And this is going to open up the new scope wizard. All right. So we go through here and I'm going to say 4600 IP telephones for TFTP. Actually, it doesn't matter. Let's say IP uh, 4600 IP telephones. Say next. Start IP address 192.168.1.181, and this is the range I'm just making for my phones. And you want to work with your network guys, okay? Uh, work with your network guys. Work with your server guys to get you the network ranges and everything you need. And uh, the document that I I've I've basically told everybody to go. Uh, refer to is the LAN administrator document for the 4600 IP telephones and I'll actually link to that in the video in the description area and a good idea is just give that to your network guys they can figure it out they can translate it out or network and server guys and they can go from there right so back to exclusions I'm not putting any exclusions in here but if I wanted to I could say I want to exclude I don't know 187 so I can say 192 168.1.187 192.168.1.187. All right, so I'm excluding just a single one address, right? But I can exclude a whole range if I wanted to. So if I wanted to put my entire network range in here and exclude those ones, you can. All right, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say next. And we want to make this for two weeks minimum. All right, so say 14 days. You can put 18 days. You can put whatever. Say next. Say no here because you're going to configure these options later. All right, so say no to the configured DHCP options and click finish. And once you're finished, your scope is created, but it's not active yet, okay? Because we're going to do some other things before we activate this. So hang on. All right, to configure these options, we're going to right click on scope options and config. Actually, you got to select it first, right click, configure options. All right. And what you want to do is you want to scroll down. Da, 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 da. Let me get down there. Go all the way to 66. Whoops, back up one. You want to select that. All right, and the string value is going to be where your TFTP server is. So we're going to say 180, which is this server, as you can see. And to verify your TFTP address, open up the TFTP server and look right here at the top. That'll tell you your IP address. That's just the port number, but 192.168.1.180. That's the IP address of the, of the TFTP, which is right here. All right. So uh, say apply, say OK, and there you go. There it is. 
All right, so now you want to go over here and I want to say the server name, click on it and right click on it. So when you right click on this, you want to select the um, set predefined options, which is right here. All right. All right, so what you want to do under the predefined options, we want to say add. And we could say something like, I don't know, uh, 4600, uh, let's say Avaya IP phones. Dash 4600. I don't know. I'm making stuff up here, right? <clears throat> and then you want to change this type. You want this to be a string. All right. And then you want to, in the code field, you want to put 176. And this is a specific file or a specific code that the phones can read. Uh, so when it's booting up and getting its IP address, you can go in here and you can see this option as, a, uh, uh, as an option to read from. All right. So we're going to say OK to this. We're going to say OK to this. All right. All right. So now we're going to add this option in with the boot server host name that we did. All right. Which is for the worst. They configure options. We're going to scroll down to, 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 to 176. And we're going to say add. I guess I could put a description there, but that's all right. All right. And once you select this, you need to put the string. Now, the string is very important because this actually. You remember how I showed you in the statically assigned? This is going to tell the DHCP server to assign all those values that you would do normally manually. All right, so we see MCI, uh, let's see, what is it? Oh, yeah, MCIPADD equals 192.168.1.150, which is my call server. And then MC port, did I spell it right? Yeah, MC port uh, equals 1719. DC now, TFTP, uh, DIR, where is it, where is it, equals, uh, where is it, path, I guess I don't need to do that, but we'll do it anyway, uh, C, duh, 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 TFTP, duh, 4600, all right, and then comma, and then TFTP, S, R V R equals 192.168.1. Uh, what is it? Oh yeah, 180. All right. Now I know that the boot option's in here for the TFTP, but you need to set this string value for this one anyway. All right. So say apply. Once that's applied, you say OK, and you can see it right here. So we're going to expand that so you can see the whole string. Let me open this up, and there you go. All right. Um, what else? What else? Oh, uh, one note. One thing to note, I did not put the, the 8021Q, I didn't put the VLAN in here because I'm leaving those default in the phones, but you can add those in here as of like version 2.4 or something, but refer to the LAN admin guide for this because it'll help you out. So we're going to say scope options, configure options, and I want to put router server name. Oh, I don't know. I guess I don't need to put server name, but we'll just say it anyway. Say gateway. Uh, the IP address is going to be 192. Dot, whoops. Dot 168.1.1 say add say apply say okay and there's all my options that I have to have in there okay now once you have this all ready to go you're gonna go activate this and once it's activated that little red circle goes away and this is now good to go and you click refresh and you can see everything is absolutely ready to go so now what we want to do is we want to get our phones prepared and have them boot so they actually get an IP address off of here. All right, so let's get the phone ready. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I've unboxed my phone and I've also purchased a 48-volt uh, power supply. Okay, and this allows me to power up my 4600 series phones as well as my 1600 series phones. You can also get PoE units, uh, the bigger ones, to basically hook up to your LAN, your, your local area network. But I'm showing you with the version I have here, okay? So what we want to do is we want to give it power. As you can see there, and the power light comes on. Okay, I'm going to hook up the network, which goes into the line side. By the way, these units are also used for powering up EU24s for the... Uh, for the extensions, the extension little button units that hang off the side of 6400 series phones. Then I want to hook up the phone side. As you can see, it goes into pin 7 and 8. I know this is kind of rough, guys, but hey. <laughs> you get what you're paid for, and you're paying for free! Alright, so if you look here, as it focuses in, there's two connections. 
the network side and the computer side. Computer side's over here, network's over there. So we're gonna plug in the network side, which is right here. As that plugs in, you can see the phone starting to power up, all right? So as it powers up, it's gonna take a bit, and I'm gonna zoom in, as you can see, it says, please wait while the phone boots up, all right? So we'll wait. All right, I've set up my environment so you can actually see, and I'm gonna refresh this every time the, when I think the phone's gonna boot up. You should see the TFTP server go active. Um, that way you can see the actual files and everything I set up was right. So let's reset the phone. So I'm gonna do mute, R-E-S-E-T, pound. Yes, reset, are you sure? Yes. And I'm resetting my existing phone so you know but if you pull a phone out of a box and you plug it in it's gonna start looking for a DHCP so what I'm essentially doing is I'm resetting the phone back to the defaults that would come out of the box except it's not reverting back to old firmware it has the newest firmware on it alright so as it resets and I won't show you the picture of the phone because you you just take a look at the first video that shows it um, or a little while back when I'm when I'm showing you unboxing it uh, it reboots and once it reboot or once it boots it comes up and it's it goes to the screen and it says DHCP and starts counting the second it's doing that it's starting to look for the boot P or starting to look for a DHCP server to assign it a, an address once it does you can go in here to the address leases and refresh and you can watch your TFTP server to see if it actually starts sending the files to the phone alright so let's watch that happen Alright, now that my phone is at the screen where the DHCP is going to start looking for an address, the client on the phone is going to start looking for an address from the server, I can start hitting refresh. Now as I'm hitting refresh, the DHCP server is actually going to start doing something before I get that, but watch here. I'm clicking the refresh. Let's see if I can beat it. Oh, look at that. There it is. There's the IP address. And there's the, there's the settings. Yes! I set it up right on the first time. So. Well, actually, <laughs> the best confirmation is when you can look at your phone. And as my phone went through and assigned all the settings to it, I can now enter my extension, as you can see here on the screen. So I'm going to enter 1013, which is an old extension, but I know it works. Password, 1313. Boom. I hit OK, and look at there. I'm at my phone. I can go off hook, 1000. Look at that. Works like a charm. So now... You can plug in any phone, and it will start assigning the addresses. As you can see here, so it's, you have two places now. You can see which phones have uh, their addresses assigned to them. And if you want, you could go in here, but see, it's refresh. But you can also go in here and say list registered, and there's your phones. All right? So there you go. That's how easy it is. Hope you guys like this video. Um, any questions, anything, anything you guys may have on this, let me know in the comments section field, and I'll be happy to help. Or just message me, and I'll be happy to help. But uh, that's it. That's pretty much how you set up your IP telephones uh, dynamically using DHCP. Alrighty, so the next videos I'm going to do are on the 1600 series phones, and that's using the web interface or web server. Uh, but we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do it both statically and dynamically. Alrighty, so be looking for those, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.